Today I'm going to talk about not one, not two, but three and a half games that are all somewhat similar. We're going to start by looking at Green Team Wins by Nathan Thornton in 25th Century Games. This title debuted at Gen Con 2022. There was quite a line of people to get Green Team Wins, and as a result, I thought I would borrow the BGG library copy and try it out for myself. I've now played twice. I can give you a quick overview of the game talk about the gameplay, and then we'll get into other things. Here are the components in Green Team Wins. Each of the three to 12 players takes a dry erase board, a pen, and a tile that shows orange team on one side and green team on the other. You have 210 cards that are divided into three categories, so 70 cards of each category. You take five cards from each category at random and shuffle them together to form a deck. And you play 15 rounds of the game, revealing one card in each of those rounds. So you reveal a card. The three categories are best of three, fill in the blank, and this or that. So each player writes down which color would make the coolest baby name, red, blue, or gray. And you can write down one, two, or three, or write out the word, whatever you want. Everyone reveals the answer at the same time. The people who have put down the most popular answer, if they are on the orange team and everyone starts on the orange team at the beginning of the game, they flip their card to green team and they score one point. Each time you go from orange team to green team, score a point. If you do not have the most popular answer and you stay on the orange team, you get nothing. If you are already on the green team and you stay on the green team, you get two points. So your goal, get on the green team, stay on the green team, by answering the same way as everyone else. If there is a tie, then the tied people who are already on the green team stay on the green team. The tied people on the orange team stay on the orange team, and everyone else would fall back on the orange team if they're not there already. So it is punishing to be on the orange team and then tie. You're only helping the green team people stay on the green team. So you answer best of three. Let's see, fill in the blank. Blank night. So write down whatever comes to mind. Blank night. Uh, day and night. Mm, dark night. Except that's not even the Batman spelling there. Or blank door. Baby blank. Baby on board. Not really sure. Which one's doing the real work here? The graham cracker, the marshmallow, the chocolate. Some questions make sense only within a certain context. If you have not had a s'more, then this question does nothing for you. We were playing with people who are not US natives and what's the most disappointing coin? Penny, nickel, dime? That meant nothing to them. So we just chose another card and went with it. And that is the case with some things as well. This or that, curly fries or waffle fries? People said, what are waffle fries? Okay, throw out that card, get something else. That happens from time to time. Who is most act likely to accidentally give away Batman's secret identity? If you are not familiar with Batman, you're just choosing someone at random. Oh, you have no, no stake in the game here, no care. Who would bring more to the relationship? Winnie the Pooh, Tigger, Eeyore? Again, if you don't know these things, they, are, they mean nothing. And you can just choose at random, go along with the group, see how people react as you read the things. It's sometimes hard to determine what to go with. Frosting or cookie dough? I guess you're eating it. I'm not sure. I think both would be gross. You just have to choose something. Uh, table or booth? Maybe you have some something to say about that. Little foods on a toothpick. Little foods on a cracker. Okay. If you have experience with the people you're playing with, some of these questions will obviously be easier than others. If you are playing with a spouse or with children or parents, you will have some idea of how they answer. Otherwise, you're just winging it, hoping everything works out, and you're going to end up with the highest score at the end of 15 rounds. I've played Green Team Wins twice so far, once with seven players and once with four, and the game generates the experience that I imagine Nathan Thornton had in mind. It's a party game that's going to work, pretty much for everyone, no matter your level of familiarity with the people around you. You might have a better chance of matching with people if you know them, but the goal of the game is more to spend time with others and possibly generate discussion as answers are revealed, such as when you have the question, who would make the best boyfriend, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, or Dracula? Well, there were a number of Twilight movies all about the Wolfman, Dracula, interaction with female humans so 
people might have opinions on that and debate which one is actually best based on their familiarity with Twilight or just general thought experiment. Or what's the scariest end of the world scenario? Alien invasion, zombie apocalypse, or robot uprising? Have you thought about that? Do you have an opinion? What can you imagine for any of these? So you're gonna have some sort of discussion and people can relate to this or the earlier question, pretty much no matter what their experience. Be able to freeze time or hear other people's thoughts. Ugh, I do not want to hear other people's thoughts. Don't want you hearing my thoughts. Answer's pretty straightforward on that. Everyone pretty much went into the freeze time category. Not quite, but bring a dessert yourself or bring a dessert you bought at the store. If you know the people you're playing with, have had some experience with them, you might already know where they fall in this category. And you're going to talk about things and, oh, well, why do you bring something you bought at the store if that's really what you think? But it's not necessarily what you think. You're trying to match other people. So whatever your actual opinion is might not match what you're actually saying. That's the goal of the game is to match other people and stay on the green team. So, okay. Uh, get really good grades or be really good at sports. I mean, these are not mutually exclusive. You can do both. I don't know why you have to choose one or the other. You, you can excel at both, but okay, maybe you're going to have discussions anyway. Not all of the cards work, though. I mentioned a few as I was giving examples of the gameplay. Uh, you have this. What's the all-time classic chocolate cereal? Cocoa Puffs, Cocoa Pebbles, Count Chocula? Like, no one really had strong opinions on this. It was just sort of like... All right, we're going to say something because we have to say something to answer the question, but eh, whatever. The tiebreak rules are punishing, as I mentioned, to those who are already on the orange team. And that's the least favorite thing that has come up in the games that we've played. We had one tie in the seven player game. We had four ties in the four player game, two of them with all four players having a different answer. So the people who were already on the green team profited. The people on the orange team did not. We had two pairs of answers. So these two gave one, these two gave one, they both match, again, same experience. So there's no way to overcome that other than chance. Maybe you're gonna get on the, the right team. Maybe you're pairing up with people or not. You don't know how it's going to happen, but you have to fill in the blank. That's where it seemed to happen most frequently where you'd have South blank and the one person says pole and one says park and one says south of the border and something else and you just, they all seem legit. You want more people in the game so you have a greater chance of having a majority that's meaningful. Having four people give all different answers, you sort of, oh, okay. I guess I can see that. And again, the rich get richer and the other people do not. So that was kind of the downer of the game is that the ties hurt so much to people who are already down. And in the four player game, one player achieved the maximum score of 29. They got on the green team first answer. They stayed on it for the rest of the game. There was no debate who was going to win. That was not really the, the point of a party game. The point of a party game is to experience other people and you have some discussion and interactions with them, create some memories from that. You're not caring who wins, but it was still a bit of yeah, a bit of a, a downer that that was an issue, that it became so clear who was winning at that point. With seven people, I wasn't even paying attention to the score because, well, sort of managing things as well, making sure people flip over the right cards, you score the right number of points, zero, one, two, get all that clear. But there were more people, so more matches and a little more debate as to what was going on. So the game works, but the tiebreak feels a little unsatisfying. And some of the cards just fell flat with the just the question on it or the people who had no experience and could not relate to it so you just throw them away and do something else okay you got a few misses there now game number two is herd mentality by dan penn and rich coombs this was released in 2020 by big potato and it's funny because this has the same style of gameplay as green team wins and that you are trying to answer with the in-group. You want to be part of the group that's saying the same thing as everyone else. Now, uh, Nathan Thornton has published a designer diary about Green Team Wins, talking about pitching in at Gen Con 2019. Games are in the works for a long period of time, and so I don't think there's, I think it's just parallel development. It's a very common idea. You want to answer with other people. 
It's not unusual that you would have multiple games along this line, but let's look at how this one works. Here are the components for herd mentality with each of the four to 20 players getting a tiny sheet of paper from the pad. You have to bring your own pen or pencil in order to write down your answers, possibly using a very small amount of space because the game lasts an indeterminate number of rounds. You keep playing until someone has eight points, at which time they might win the game. We'll talk about that in a moment. The rounds play out similar to green team wins in that you're going to reveal a card and everyone writes down an answer. You then see which answer is given most frequently and those players will score. The questions are somewhat similar to green team wins, which has three types of questions. You have this or that, so an A or B answer similar to this. Would you rather talk like Yoda or Darth Vader? Everyone's gonna be divided into a camp. A or B, one or two, that's it. So you have best of three. So maybe you have three choices and then you have fill in the blank. So the questions in herd mentality are a bit more open-ended and they invite more imaginative thoughts among the players. What's the slipperiest thing in the world? Or name something you lose as you get older. There is a lot of open-endedness to this. And so you have more interesting answers, making it possibly harder to match, but it's more interesting based upon what people actually say. You also have, if you could win one, which would you choose, Oscar, Olympic gold, or Nobel prize? So best of three. Okay, we are familiar with that concept from Green Team Wins and of course, party games in general. A bear runs at you, what do you do? Again, more open-ended, more imaginative, straightforward, run. Who's just gonna write run? Is everyone gonna write run? Maybe I'll just write run. Although other people might have different ideas as to what to do. What is the stickiest food? Hmm, that seems like it's gonna invite stories. Name a bird that can't fly. You got a few choices that probably come to mind. Would you rather have a statue of yourself or a painting of yourself? So A, B. So, similar ideas in terms of the categories, but again, hmm, how many days do you think you could go without washing before people started to notice? Everyone have an experience like this in college? I had a roommate like this who tried to do this experiment in college. Out of all the animals in the world, which is the cutest? Again, there's more personality that's coming out of these questions but they are more open-ended and that possibly makes it harder to match among the players. When you do have a match, if you have a clear majority, one answer being more common than any other answer, all of those people who give that answer score one point. That's it. doesn't matter how many people say something, you get one point, done. If there's a tie for most frequently given answer, no one scores anything. Okay. Very straightforward. So you're going to collect points. Maybe these two people score and now these two people score. And when you get three, you can convert it to a three point token. Okay, you got this extraneous pen keeping the scoring tokens together. And you have this pink cow, which I have not mentioned yet. But if you have a round in which only one person gives an answer that did not match anything else, they're the oddball, they're the outcast, they gave the thing that everyone said, huh, to, they get the pink cow. Doesn't count as a point. As long as they have this pink cow, they cannot win. They can still score more points in the future. So people can still keep gathering points, but they need someone else to take this cow away in order for them to win when they hit eight points. So you need, you got this sort of sub-competition. You want to be in the majority, but you also hope not to get this or to have someone else take this away from you. So it's this interesting sub-competition going on at the same time as the main event. You keep playing rounds until someone has eight points. If only one person has eight points, they win. If multiple people have eight points, you continue playing rounds. And if only one person has nine points, they win. If there's a tie, keep going to 10 points and so on until you have one clear winner. I played Herd Mentality three times on our review copy from Big Potato, once each with five, six, and seven players. And the concept is the same as Green Team Wins in that you were trying to be part of the in crowd, trying to be part of the herd and answer the same way as other people. But I find Herd Mentality more enjoyable because in general, the questions invite a little more thought and discussion and imagination as you are trying to picture a particular situation and then 
see whether anyone else says the same thing. So you've got this more divided conflict between what's interesting, what's exciting, what's fun to answer, and what you think other people will also answer. There's more going on because there are more open-ended questions, which again, sometimes make the game last longer because you are less likely to have commonality between people. That's okay for me. I'm fine with that. Also, it does away, the scoring does away with the nature of green team wins where someone can get ahead and then just keep piling on the points and everyone's like, okay, we've got three more rounds. We're probably not gonna catch them. We're just done at this point, but we'll keep going because we're just curious to see what people say. The tiebreaker in herd mentality is more along the lines of what I'd like to see in that if there is a tie, no one scores. You need a majority. You need the group to decide on something in order for people to score. Otherwise, it's a null round. Okay, we'll just try again and see what happens. Of course, this happens more frequently with fewer players than with more players, similar to green team wins. That's just going to be the nature of the thing. You get more people together and you're going to get more consensus or at least more common answers just because you have more people together. Similar to how if you get a large enough group, you're going to more often have people who have the same birthday. It's just chance that that's going to happen and people are going to say the same thing. I also really enjoy just the nature of the pink cow. It's this superfluous element. It doesn't have to be there, but it gives a little something else. If you have it, you are desperate to have someone else take it away from you. And so it gives you this additional edge, this just something extra rather than just scoring. It's not just scoring, but scoring twice by handing it off to someone else and finding that other person who's just the outcast out there away from everyone else. So herd mentality has gone over better for me for those reasons. There's just a bit more to think about or grab onto with the questions and more to talk about. Uh, the box is fuzzy. That's an additional bonus. It's not really extra. It's probably not something that you necessarily care about. Um, there is no sticker on here now, but there is uh, only this uh, in terms of plastic in the game. I know that's becoming more of a concern for people, so I thought I'd mention that. Now, I talked about, I said initially I was gonna talk about three and a half games. So we got Green Team Wins, Herd Mentality, which both had the same idea, think with the crowd, go with the group. Well, there is a much older game that has that same concept called What Were You Thinking by Richard Garfield at the time when you actually had this trademark phrase, a Richard Garfield game. It was important at that time. This game came out in 1998 from Wizards of the Coast, which of course released Garfield's Magic the Gathering in 1993 to huge success. You trademarked that at that point. And yes, we're going to have a Richard Garfield game come out. So what it, were you thinking works along the same lines and that you were trying to give the answer that other people are going to give, but there's a little bit more going on with the concept, which makes it a little more convoluted and the winning condition works a bit differently. Here are the components for What Were You Thinking, which once again was released in 1998. I don't recall when I bought this game. The board is now warped over time, but so be it. That sometimes happens with games that are 20 years old. The game includes six pawns. You can have four or more players. So if you have more than four, you are going to use something else to represent them on the score track. You place everyone at the begin step. You give everyone a pencil or sheet of paper, something else to write on, your choice. The game includes 250 cards that have four questions or categories on each side. So there's 2,000 questions total. On a turn, one player is going to flick the spinner. Yes, the spinner. And read off the question of the appropriate color or choose their own or make up their own as they wish. All of the blue questions are fact or fiction. Benjamin Franklin invented eyeglasses. Or fact or fiction, uh, due to the greenhouse effect, the polar ice caps were 10% smaller in 1997 than they were in 1947. Wow, aged questions, uh, Trivial Pursuit style. It's kind of interesting to run across those. Uh, which number does not belong in the following list? Two, five, 10, or 20? There is no correct answer. Hmm, that is not fact or fiction in that case. But there's no correct answer. The correct answer is the thing that people say the most. 
the red categories, the purple categories, always follow a format in which you're going to list five things. List five pizza toppings, list five black and white films, five rock bands, list five places you don't want to go, or name five things that come to mind when you think of dogs. So very open-ended, you're going to make a list. Now, how you score these is you're going to choose one player to read off their five things, everyone else who is given the similar answer to you. Caller, well, you all raise your hand and you count how many people have raised their hand, including you, and you write down that number. So you're gonna have a list of five things on your sheet. Caller, and you write down seven, because seven people raise their hand. And leash, and food. Okay, write down the numbers, add up that, add up all the numbers for all the five things you listed. Everyone's gonna go around the table. If they have listed something that hasn't been read so far, you're going to say that. Possibly you're only going to score one because you were the only person who put that thing. After you've gone around the room and list named all the stuff that is on your list, you're going to add up those five numbers and you get a score. Scoring for fact and fiction, of course, is much easier. Which group has said something the most? Which one has said it the least? Okay, the green answers, sometimes they're A, B categories. Sometimes they're not. Would you rather eat the perfect dinner or the perfect dessert? So A, B. Would you rather be a puppy or a kitten? A, B, okay. Who here reads the newspaper most often? Well, how many people do you have at the table? That's the number of possible answers. Or who here pays the most in taxes every year? Woo, that's a fun one to talk about, sure. Uh, do you dream in color black and white? Would you rather be able to fly or turn invisible? Similar to Green Team Wins with the one about hearing people's thoughts or freezing time. Hmm. Okay, so you're going to get a score. If, you're, if you have the lowest score, so if you have a fact or fiction question, uh, the name Wendy's, Wendy didn't exist until the author of Peter Pan made it up. Fact or fiction. Okay, whichever group answers uh, appears less often. Whichever one is in the out group, they are going to move their marker up on the board. And when, and when you have a list, list five pets, list five places of, five pieces of exercise equipment. Hard to read these upside down a bit. Whoever has the lowest score or is tied for the lowest score when you have those lists, they're going to move their marker up. So you being in the out group, the one who is not popular, the one who is saying the thing that is less frequently answered than anyone else, you are going to move up the track. And there may be more than one of you, especially in the fact or fiction category, because if five people say fact and three say fiction, well, those three people are moving up on the track. And you're going to keep moving up at different rates, depending on the questions you have there. And when someone hits the what were you thinking space, the game ends, and everyone who is not in that space wins the game. This is the only person. You got one loser, possibly more than one loser. You may want to adjust the count on the track based on the number of players. The more players you have, the harder it is for people to move up the board. Okay, so it makes the game last longer. You might just play till you hit five or six or whatever it is based on what feels right for you. Now, what were you thinking came out in 1998. There was a revised version called Hive Mind that came out in 2016. It sort of addressed this issue where you were now bees in a hive and as you answered incorrectly by not matching with the group, you would fall through the hive. And there was a queen bee token that would move around the board and it would what would happen is the player with the worst score would fall down or the two people with the worst score would fall down or the three people with the worst score would fall down. And if you're tied for worse, then possibly even more people would fall down. So that addressed the issue somewhat because more people would potentially move on the track just based on where the queen was on the board. But otherwise, gameplay was the same and you're given categories, you're trying to answer it and not fall off the grid and be the loser. I played What Were You Thinking four times on a copy that I bought from a thrift store at some point in the past. Don't remember where or when, but I have played these four times as recorded on BGG. And the game concept is identical to Green Team Wins and Herd Mentality in that you are rewarded for thinking like other people, for merging with them and saying the same thing that they do, whether it's correct or not. 
So the concept is very familiar. The implementation works a bit differently because you are punished and move up the scoring track, which is bad only when you're the worst one in the group. And the more people you have at the table, the longer a game takes. And I remember at least one session where it just seemed to go on and on and on because one person would move and another would move and another move and so on. Because if you have ties, multiple people move up. If you have the fact or fiction where it's AB, multiple people are going to move up. But if you keep having the list five things or name five things in a category, often you have only one person at the bottom and it takes much longer to score the list five things because you have to go around the table, give the five things, why do you do this? You need to raise the hand, you're gonna count around the table and it's gonna take a little while to do that. You've got a lot of open-ended things to come up like list five dogs or list five pets, name five things uh, that would be covered in the newspaper or just any sort of category here. Uh, list five nicknames that mean mother. Name five things that come to mind when you think of fast food. All very open-ended, possibly not matching with others, possibly matching, but it takes a while to go through all the five and count the score and you add it all up. And at the end, yep, you move up a space on the board. And then we keep going. So it can take a while. So possibly you set a lower threshold for determining the loser. And then at that point, everyone else wins. It works well, but it can take a while. And you can see how herd mentality and green team wins have streamlined things a bit more, and they're going to keep the playing time more consistent. Green team wins specifically because there's 15 rounds and that's it. And herd mentality just because it's a fairly low score and more than one person can score at a time and you're just going up to hit a threshold. You're not going to count lots of things. You're not listing five things like the most frequently visited landmarks in the United States. Okay, that can work, but whew, list five of the best authors of all time. That's pretty open-ended and it can take a while for you to try to come up with five. Are you trying to actually think of the, the best authors that other people are trying to give? You gotta have that list, make that all up there. It can take a while. So the game works, but it it functions a bit differently. It's much more of a time killer because you are playing a lot longer. So depends on the level of uh, seriousness, the party game you want, how intense, how focused do you want people to be? Because the other two, Herd Mentality and Green Team Wins, can be played more casually and sporadically, people paying less attention. You don't have to focus as much to make all the lists and do all those things. So these games all work along the same lines. They have different features in terms of what might be best for your group. The concept is the same. It's always interesting to see how people take that concept, that idea at the heart of the game, think like other people and you will succeed and then implement it in slightly different ways. So thought I'd talk about them. Here's three of the games. Hive minus the half game, which I don't have. So you'll just have to imagine it somehow. But there you go. Overview of new and old games alike.